Welcome to the 20th beginning Java tutorial. And this is the second part we're doing on static variables. And I promise this will not be as long as the last video we did on static. This is just kind of an extension on static. Now, if you remember in the last video, we were incrementing this username count static variable from our constructor. Well, I've removed everything out of that constructor, and now it's just back to a default constructor. And the point I want to make in this video is that we can also increment this from our objects over here. And you might ask, well, how is that the case? And well, you'll hear people out there in some of these other videos say, objects all share the static variable. Well, that's true in a way. And what happens is, remember in the last video, I said that the registration class is loaded out there by the class loader. The class loader then looks for static keywords and loads each one of these out into the memory. Now what happens specifically with that is he makes a copy of this, a one-time copy only, and copies it out into this shared memory where it's ready to go. I think I call it the runtime memory, but you can also think of it as a shared memory. And then it just sits there for good. That copy just sits there for good. And then as we request objects to be made from our registration class, those all go into this other type of memory. But basically, since that static variable is just sitting out there in shared memory, each object that gets created down the line can see him. And they can actually alter his value too as well. And the class can see it as well. So if we go down here and we go down here and type in registration dot, and there you can see, we can see our static variable. Now, since we've created our new user one object off our registration class, let's see if the new user one can see it. And that's actually a bug in NetBeans, and we're actually going to have to hard code the uh, static variable in over here. So that's a bug in NetBeans where they can't see it, but the objects, trust me, they can go ahead and reference the uh, static variable. And as I just said, the class also, which is also loaded out there, right? The class loader loads the registration class out into memory too. So he can also see it too, because remember, that static variable is in shared memory. So that means we can go ahead and alter that static variable from the objects as well. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and do that. And so what's gonna happen here is new user one is going to increment our static variable. And we're yeah, it's giving us this uh, little warning message saying, hey, by the way, you're accessing static field username count, just to let you know it's a static variable, good, we don't care. Now, if you remember in the previous video, we were incrementing this in the constructor. Now all we're doing is we're waiting till the object is created and then we're gonna increment it. And so it's essentially doing the same thing, just in a different way. So let's go ahead and run this. And you can see we got one. And so let's go ahead and create a new object. Now, in fact, let's just copy and paste all of this because we're gonna need it all. And we'll just go ahead down here and we'll just make this two and two and two and we'll run it and look at that we got two and so this again is doing the same thing no different really than than putting it in this constructor the only difference is this is a real pain to type all this out so that's why it's actually easier to use the constructor i'm just showing you it's kind of like you know it's kind of like the same thing as having to type out those variables remember we had to do that and it's much easier putting them in the uh, constructor. So same kind of uh, notion there. Now, you can also reset the static variable. Remember, even though the static variable is out there, and if you remember in the last video, I was telling you that the state doesn't change. What I mean by state is that memory is allocated. He's just sitting out there. That doesn't really change. But the state always changes on objects as they come and go because the memory gets allocated and then it's deleted by the garbage collector. Well, we can go ahead and reset that static variable. So let's do that. Let's go ahead and do the same thing by another object. We'll say, okay, now we want to go ahead and actually reset that. So we'll make this object new user three, new user three, new user three. Now, instead of using the incremental operator, we'll say this equals zero. So keep in mind, that if we create new objects, we're starting over again. So always keep that in mind if you're gonna play around with a static variable like that. It's for good. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this. And there you can see this guy went ahead and reset it to zero. Now, we could also have the class do this. So let's go ahead and put in registration. And we'll go ahead and copy and paste this into each one of these now. 
And let's just go ahead and get rid of all of our objects. We don't need them anymore. Because remember, the static variable is not tied to the objects. He's out there by himself. And we'll hit registration everywhere here. And let's run this and we will get the same exact result. So as you can see, there's two different ways we can go ahead and reference that static variable. Okay, I think we've uh, talked about static quite a bit here. And we will move on to another tutorial. Talk to you guys later.